Hey everybody, this is Will. Today we're continuing our deep dive into Oracle for X series. Now Oracle for X series is the free control software for my connectivity that allows you to connect and control your interfaces. If you haven't downloaded the software yet, click the link in the description of this video to download for free and you can follow along with today's video. Now, um, in our previous video, we talked about the audio page on the Play Audio 12, but today I wanna talk about the audio page on the Audio 4C and then any other iConnectivity audio interface. And this is gonna look almost identical, uh, but based on your interface, if you have less inputs or less outputs, then obviously you'll see less faders. But otherwise, uh, the process is going to be exactly the same. So let's dive into it and get started. So I've got my Audio 4 Plus and Audio 4C connected here. First thing I want to show you is just that, uh, again, like I mentioned, uh, these look similar. So if I click the audio page here, and then I go to the audio page over on the Audio 4 Plus, I mean, they are the exact same uh, process uh, because of the same amount of inputs and outputs. But today, let's work uh, using the Audio 4C. So I'm gonna click the audio page here and we're gonna dive into this. The first thing I wanna mention is our analog inputs. Uh, so we can adjust the gain of our input here. We could type in an exact value. We could mute it. We could uh, provide phantom power and we could switch from um, a low Z or high Z input. And high Z is useful if you're plugging a guitar or an instrument uh, into that. So that's our analog inputs. Let's go to our outputs next. Uh, again, this is gonna change based on how many outputs you have on your exact input interface. Uh, but in the case of the Audio 4C, I can adjust the level, output level of each of my outputs here. Again, I could move a fader. I could type in an exact value. I could mute or choose to manage these in stereo pairs if I wanted to. And then I also have the ability to adjust my headphone output here, uh, type in an exact value, manage it in a stereo pair, uh, or mute that as well too. Now, the next thing, and this is uh, really unique to Oracle for X series and, and again, makes really powerful control very simple. Uh, these are our four mode selectors. And so we have four modes on um, uh, in Oracle for X series that we could choose for our interface. Let's really uh, quickly talk through each of those four, and then we'll do a deep dive into each mode and how it changes the look of the audio page. So our first mode here is record. And as you probably guessed, uh, this is best if you're using the interface to record using the analog inputs um, uh, of the interface. Next is play USB one. This is best if you're using the interface, primarily in a playback scenario where you're playing click and tracks from a doll. Uh, and if the um, computer that's connected to USB one, the device that's connected to USB one is where you're playing back content from, then choose play USB one. Uh, if you're connected to play USB two, then choose play USB two, which is super helpful. And again, we'll, we'll do a deep dive in each of these modes next. Now, the final mode here is really unique to Oracle Frag series and, and really, really cool. Uh, this is the stream mode. This allows you to uh, route audio between devices uh, connected to USB one and two, uh, allows you to um, uh, basically create a virtual kind of loop back audio return channel to your computer as well too. Uh, and this mode is super helpful for Zoom calls, for screen captures. If you're live streaming uh, yourself, playing a game, teaching a tutorial, performing a song, there's some really great uh, uh, features of stream mode. Now, let's briefly walk through each one of these modes and tabs and see how uh, the interface changes. And you'll notice the top part of the interface here doesn't change at all as we click through these, but what does change is the bottom portion here. And so let's walk through the difference uh, differences in each of these modes. So starting with record mode, uh, we have three options here. We can build um, a mix and choose what comes out of our analog one and two outputs, our analog three and four outputs, and then our headphone mix. Now let's start with analog one and two. So for analog one and two, we can choose uh, to send what's coming from USB one, channel one and two. Again, uh, the, these settings are, are same for each. We can adjust the level, uh, type in a level, uh, choose our pan, um, uh, type in pan, mute, solo, or manage these either as stereo pairs or as um, individual mono inputs. Um, and then we have the same controls here, but for USB two, channels one and two. And this is helpful if you've maybe you've got a computer connected to one input that's your tracks and your other computers, your keys, um, or you're using a phone on one and a computer on one. You can send outputs from both of those devices uh, down analog outputs one and two. Then we can choose uh, between mic one and two. And this could be a, an instrument connected to input one or two as well too. Uh, and mic three and four. Now, if we go to analog three and four, again, really similar, uh, ex exact same controls, but it's worth noting that uh, we could choose to have completely different things going out of analog three and four than we do out of analog one and two. And then finally, we can go to our headphone mix here. 
and say, what do we want to hear in our headphone mix? Uh, it could be a mix of USB one channels, one and two USB two channels, one and two or mics, uh, one and two or the whatever's connected to mic three and four. So a lot of really powerful, great options there. Now let's go to play USB one. Again, this is the mode that you would choose if you're in a live playback scenario and the device that you're playing back from is connected to USB one. So now if we go down here, this is going to default to just making this a, a one-to-one -one routing. What I mean by that is analog one and two. The default state is we're only going to hear analog one and two of the device connected to USB one. If we go to three and four, then we'll hear outputs three and four of the device connected to USB one. If we go to headphone mix, then we'll hear outputs five and six of the device connected to USB one. And again, we can adjust the level, uh, the same controls we had before level type in a value pan mute solo and choose to manage uh, in stereo pairs there if we wanted to. So this is the default, but we could go in and say, you know what, we're, we're in a playback scenario, but um, I want to hear uh, channels one and channels three and four out of output one and two, I, you know, whatever reason you would want to do that, maybe to create a monitor mix as opposed to, um, uh, to just output, but you have a lot of flexibility and control there. Uh, play USB 2, the same exact stuff, but uh, our defaults are going to come from the device connected to USB 2 as opposed to 1. So you see here, uh, 1 and 2 is USB 2 channels 1 and 2, 3 and 4 is going to be USB 2 channels 3 and 4, and then headphone mix is going to be uh, USB 2 channels 5 and 6. Again, these are the defaults, but you can go in and uh, create whatever mix works best for you. Now, again, our next and final mode here is stream mode, and this is a really unique mode to Oracle for X-Series, and allows you to do stuff that a lot of us uh, previously would download software things that would allow us to create kind of a, a virtual uh, audio loop back it, you know, back into our software. For instance, I could be playing a game, I could be monitoring my game, but I want to send that out to my stream output. Uh, I no longer have to use software and, and, and bog down my computer and stress my computer doing that. I can do all of that on hardware using the audio 4 C and Oracle for X series. So let's click stream. Let's explore, uh, what other, what other options here, uh, that we have, cause we have a few other options. So let's go to analog one and two on analog one and two. Um, the default here is that we hear, uh, channels one and two from the device connected to one, but we have the ability to hear channels one and two uh, from the device connected to USB two. And then we have the option to hear uh, what's connected to mics one through four. Okay. If we go to analog three and four, our default here is to hear uh, channels one and two of the device connected to um, uh, USB two. Um, mic one and two, mic three and four, and then USB one channels one and two. Again, these are defaults, but change them to, to work and suit your needs. And then headphone mix, again, we have the same exact control here. Mics one and two, three and four. We default to just mic one and two, uh, but we could, again, adjust the level on each of these. Now, the next thing that's really cool, uh, I mentioned this kind of audio virtual loopback scenario to where uh, we can send audio back to the devices connected to USB one and two. This is how we would configure that. So if I go to USB one, mix, I can choose to send back to my computer. And this would show up in Zoom as my mic input. This would show up in Skype as a mic input. If I'm streaming to YouTube, to Facebook, whatever it is, this would show up as my mic input. So what do I want to send back to my streaming service, to um, my, my uh, conferencing service, whatever it is here. So I could choose to send back USB 1, channels 1 and 2, uh, USB two channels one and two. And again, my mic one and two and three and four. And what's really unique about this too, is I'm not just sending my mic. For instance, if I'm, um, uh, talking into a mic and I want that to go to the stream, uh, I'm not just turning on my mic and having to listen to my mic and talk and try to manage that. I can choose for me to use, uh, maybe in, for example, in my headphone mix, let's turn my mic down so I don't hear it, but let's turn up, uh, what's coming from uh, USB one channels one and two. And then we could say, okay, USB one, I want my mic to turn up and I want this to go as well too. So there's a lot of really cool possibilities here uh, in a streaming scenario, even just for doing zoom calls. Um, this is a way better scenario to buy an audio 4 C and use Oracle for X series and try to use any sort of software to, to manage this. So USB one, again, my options here are, uh, the, the channels one and two stereo output of USB one. That's the device connected to USB one, uh, channels one and two of the device connected to USB two, and then uh, mic one through four here. And then again, same, same thing, USB two, 
Uh, I have USB one channels one and two, USB two channels one and two, uh, mic one and two, and mic three and four. Now, finally, at the bottom here, uh, we have the ability to adjust our sample rate, our bit depth, and then our clock source. I would suggest not changing your clock source unless you know what you're doing, but you could choose to set it to uh, USB device port one, USB device port two. Uh, but by default, leave that set to internal unless you have a reason to change anything. Final thing I want to mention is up here at the top right. Um, we walk through a lot. We talk through a lot. If you're confused about the different options available to you, particularly in your modes, then enable tooltips and anything yellow, it's going to describe to you what those are and how to use them. So this is really helpful. Uh, we could go to analog inputs and see um, uh, what that is, analog outputs, what that is. But I think more impo importantly, see what our different modes are, uh, when iConnectivity suggests that you use those, and then we'll get a brief description of each of those modes down here. So tooltips is uh, super helpful if you're just getting started with the interface, um, or maybe you're using it and you've used it for a while for playback, but want to try to use it to record or to stream, enable tooltips and you'll get kind of a, a little virtual assistant within the software to help you figure it out. Now, if you need a little more than this video or tooltips and Oracle for X series to help you figure out what to do, um, then reach out to iConnectivity support. And I've included information, uh, contact information on how to reach them in the description of this video. Uh, reach out, they'll be more than happy to help uh, solve your particular issue, point you in the right direction, or maybe help you figure out how to integrate this gear into your particular setup. But thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to join me next week as we continue our deep dive into Oracle for X series. Take care, everybody. Bye.